and we're back back into the tour stage seven yes stage seven and uh, it's been quite an exciting race I actually left a few of uh, yesterday's paintings out for you to see um, today it's a single breakaway single rider out off the front rider from stage one um, what was his name again? Johan Ofreda. Very Italian sounding name or German slash Italian, but anyway, he's a French rider on a French team. Wanty Group uh, Gobert. Now, as a sole rider, single rider out away from the Peloton. Um, Trying to hold off on a sprinter stage. I don't give him much chance of succeeding. But again, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So he's out there giving it a shot. I just have no hope for the poor guy. <laughs> but, you know, you got to try. I'm sure he went out on the front. I did not see the very beginning of the stage. Um, I'm sure he thought he'd get some other companions, but apparently that just didn't work out. So he's out here giving it a go. Right now he's having a little chat with his uh, sports director, the guy coordinating the race from the car. Mechanics are in the car as well, should anything go wrong. On the roof of the car are... Um, Spare bikes, bike wheels, all kinds of food inside the car, water bottles, you name it. They got it, pretty much. Except for uh, medical supplies, but there's a team doctor car for that, of course. So, not team doctor, excuse me. Although there is a team doctor, there's a uh, race doctor, there's actually a medical car for immediate sort of first day quick evaluation then there's an ambulance or two that follows the race just in case um, something far more severe happens and of course we've already seen some pretty serious broken bones in this year's tour So I'm just getting the line work laid in. And if you're wondering, I, you know, other than seeing the image, I really don't know. You know I, when I see it, I see it kind of thing. <laughs> What's that old expression? I don't know what I, or what is it? No, oh, I think it's in regards to pornography, so maybe I should mention it, but you know, I can't describe it, but I know it when I see it. That's kind of the way it is with can't describe what it is that's going to make a good piece. Well, that's probably not true either. But anyway, <clears throat> but I know what I'm going to, when I see the painting. So I don't necessarily set out each day with an objective. Oh, well, we, you know, we got to capture this. we got to capture that. Well, you know, I do usually intend to get the finish. Although there are days when that's just not the biggest story in the race so even on some days I won't have a uh, guy with his arms in the air painting although unless it's a really tight sp sprint that happens every day with the exception of the time trials because you don't know you've won unless you're the last rider and you happen to also post the best time so today's stage is very flat very long, in fact the longest stage of the tour, 147 miles, forget what that is in kilometers, um, 231 kilometers. You're going to one of my favorite cities, with the exception of Paris, in France, um, they're going to Chartres, with the beautiful cathedral of Chartres, been a religious spot for over 1,200 years. 
you know, living in the U.S. and we think of something as old, like I live here in Richmond, Virginia, and we have old buildings that were built in the 1600s. Of course, in Europe, that's considered a new building. So I don't know exactly what's being said between these two, but I just tried to go on with you. Because it seems to be the gesture, it's like, yeah, forget it. And I'm sure he's being told, you know, you don't really have any chance of succeeding today. He's like, yeah, shut up. <laughs> forget it. I'm going to go anyway, what the hell. And it's really... You know, cycling, or not really any athletic sport, is such pursuit. It's such a uh, long shot anyway. And I would add to that, being an artist is such a long shot anyway. You know, it's, it's not going to work, let's face it. The odds are totally against you that you're going to be able to be a professional cyclist, that you're going to be able to live off your art, that you're going to be able to pursue your dreams doesn't mean you shouldn't try <laughs> you know no matter how long the odds are I mean that's why I like these long breakaway guys you know I'm I feel an affinity for their um, doing it even though it's incredibly limited chance of succeeding Because God knows there's very little chance that, you know, I'm going to be the next Picasso. Obviously, I think my work's great, but, you know. So, again, we're laying in first the warm colors. Oh, I just saw something that I missed. A little bit of line work here. No pun intended, since it is the uh, line in the roadway. Um, I noticed that because I was working on some orange tones here and it's all that stripe down the road that was bright yellow, which is a little unusual. Most of the road markings are white in Europe. I'm used to the yellow center line here in the States. So... Now we'll switch over to the cooler colors. And this 21 on the back of this car here, that's his position. Oops, not the color I wanted. Um, the team car's position in the caravan, the line. And that's determined by um, their highest place rider in GC. So not only, of course, clearly important to win the race. But for a lot of riders, that's just not a realistic possibility. So, and that's important where your car is, because when you have something go wrong, like Tom Dumoulin did yesterday, or early on it was um, Nairo Quintana that had a mechanical, had a crucial part in the race, the longer it takes that team car to get to you, the more time you lose and it can be very difficult to make that time back up again. So the race leader's car is the closest to the peloton and then clearly going back from that. So this picking up more color here. Actually, I want to get a nice dark blue to match the jersey of Wanty Group. So they had these deep blue with the really shocking, brilliant green. It's one of the things as a cyclist. I don't personally wear much bright clothes, but when I'm out on the road, I want the brightest colored kit I can find. It's dangerous. Cars 
don't see us, don't look for us, or worse, try to hit us. But still, I would rather have the bright clothes on, at least get the conscientious ones who are trying to avoid us a chance not to hit us. And of course, I would never, ever ride without a helmet. Just don't do it. I've been hit um, 10 times by cars out on the road. <clears throat> Anytime I've been hit, it's not been my fault. <laughs> I mean, like, certifiably not my fault. But, you know, there's an expression, dead right. <laughs> so, and I have a bad habit of uh, demanding my right away on the road which has probably got a, a lot to do with the times I have been hit. So, again, we're going to make the black. Now, this time you can actually see it. So right now I'm picking up a lizard and crimson, mixing that in. And I don't want to get too much water on the brush because, again, it's a translucent media, and that media is also affected the translucency by how much water you have mixed into your paint. Obviously the more water, less pigment ratio, the um, more translucent the paint you're putting on. So you can see it's really dark there because it's heavier saturate of pigment to, to uh, water ratio and then lightening that amount changing that ratio means it's a uh, more of a gray less of a black see like those wheels now to get the gray of the road I always feel like that asphalt picks up a bit of blue and I don't know if that's a little bit of the asphalt reflecting the sky or just exactly why it has that color. And again you've got just a little bit of open time so see how I just picked up water there I didn't pick up any pigment and that allowed me to um, make sure I didn't get a hard line where I transitioned um, from putting paint on, picking up more, putting more paint down. I didn't want a start and stop line. And there are some media that you can add to your watercolors to keep them open longer. Kind of just like with oil paint, you have a drying medium that will speed up drying. The acrylics and watercolors lots of time you want to slow that down keep the paint open longer so you can get better blending it's all about ratios and also with watercolors a lot of the time it's all about confidence you just kind of got to go with it you know the worst that can happen is you have to throw a little bit of throw a piece away if it doesn't work it doesn't work nothing wrong in that Believe me, even with ones that I keep, they're not all, you know, there's always going to be ones that are better. One of the things we do every day is my wife Bridget picks out her favorite of the day. And it's, and I like having her do it as opposed to me because a different set of eyes on a painting is always important. And I'm fortunate, and I do mean this seriously, I'm fortunate that she's a pretty harsh critic. I've had instances with a client in the room where she goes, uh, Greg, that painting doesn't work. It's not good. You need to do a new one. And while that can be a little frustrating <laughs> at times, she's never wrong. It's just I don't want to do a new one. But it's good. It's always good to have somebody keep you honest. You know? We... Uh, we need good critics. And she's not unkind about it. <laughs> well, 
No, she's not unkind about it. So that's today's painting. Again, all these paintings are being shared on my blog at theartofcycling.blogspot.com. They're available for sale through there. Or you can go directly to my website, gregleach.com, G-R-E-I-G-L-E-A-C-H, and uh, purchase a painting there securely. Please consider becoming a subscriber to this channel. And thanks for watching.